Hello, I'm back again to annoy the crap out of you guys. This is uh, going to be just another informative video, especially on the uh, MTS uh, series of cars, the, actually the R series and the MTS series. A lot of questions have been floating around with uh, in relation to parts and, and compatibility between the chassis and what you can and what you can't actually cross over. To give you an idea, the R-series cars in the um, touring versions, like the R3 um, GC and Pro, and the MTS T3, and the new MTS T3, well, T3M, and also with the conversion, about 85% of everything between the chassis crosses over from one to another. So if you have one of these, which is the glass version or the gla or the carbon version, um, you find that the only difference between this and say an MTS, uh, sorry, T3M is arms because these have plastic arms and the MTS has the carbon arms, which is the carbon plate arms. I'll show you my car even though it's taken apart for a bit of TLC, they're the carbon arms, okay? Because the actual pivot points for the arms and the holders themselves are already pre-drilled into the chassis. So you can actually get a lot of stuff and configure the car up to what you'd like to try and find would be a good happy medium for you driving the chassis. With the glass version, the bulkheads are plastic, the lower bulkheads that is, and the chassis top braces and chassis itself are glass, and you can change them, oh sorry, and uh, shock towers as well. You can change them over to carbon and drive the car, play around with it, do what you want to do. And if you want to try something different, you can by all means put the carbon arms of the T3M onto the uh, 3 and get the sway bars to suit, because they are different sway bars, and then throw it together and see which basically chassis you prefer. Just got to take into consideration that the bulkheads for the R3 take the standard sway bar system, whereas the actual sway bar system on the T3M is a nitro type arrangement. We'd call it nitro because it comes from uh, the old days of nitro racing, which is basically a half bar split with a ball into a cup, and that basically gives you your sway bar and it bolts onto the arms. It doesn't float up anywhere else. <clears throat> So, to give you an idea, the chassis configuration between the R3 GC Pro and T3M is identical. It's the same chassis. No difference. The only difference is carbon and basically um, glass, okay? The T3M conversion is the new chassis with a different bulkhead. Uh, motor mount bulkhead and also chassis. So what you find in the actual uh, conversion is a chassis that is slightly different to this. But the arms and everything else can cross over from one to the other. The difference is between the two and you can use a conversion chassis on an R3 and change it over completely. It's a drop-in fit. That's the best part of it. It is a drop-in fit. That is the motor mount, okay? That's the actual motor mount of the T3M conversion. It's a one-piece monster with a separate part here that you bolt up to hold your spur, but it's solid as. And what they do use on that one is, I'll take it out of here, you make it a bit more nicer looking. It uses a one-piece um, top deck, okay? You can also get half split decks as well, but that's basically the T3M conversion. Now the conversion can go from R to G, R3, G, C and Pro. And a lot of the parts on the actual Pro can cross over to the T3M, which is that. That's got the conversion on it, so it's a T3M conversion kit. And the parts on this can go on to that. So there's a great, great plethora of adjustments and play around scenarios that you can have with the chassis. We have a few guys uh, on the forum asking about uh, suspension arms. Um, I make fixed toe rear arms that use 
um, Schumacher MI5 pillow balls to actually set it on the chassis so it's fixed it can't be adjusted yet you choose two two and a half or three but race op themselves have to suit the chassis a option arm which is two and a half three and three and a half rear toe adjustable by their I can't show you one now because I don't have it but they have literally on the arms they have the alloy carriers for the rear uprights for the uh, rear hubs I should say and you can actually adjust it so you have two and a half three or three and a half if it's going to be really greasy and no grip at all and you need grip you can go three and a half they are a genuine fit onto the chassis so you can take the standard arms that you come in the kit and change them to the conversion ones that I've spoken about which gives you greater uh, toe adjustment because out of the kit they're only uh, oh, it goes to two and a half, so it's two and a half, two or one and a half. Okay, so for um, to get a lot of mo a lot more rotation, you just take away the toe. Doesn't work on every track though, so you got to play around with it. But bang for buck, and yes, you you guess you got to pay bits and pieces. You have to buy buy bits and pieces to do it. But you start with the C, uh, sorry, the uh, G version, which is the glass version and you build up from here. This chassis out of the box is currently, because there's very little you gotta to do to make it work. You leave the chassis, you leave the, uh, the bulkheads. So you leave the chassis, you leave your top decks and you leave your uh, towers or glass and you just run, if you want to, uh, new bottom bulkheads, which are alloy, you just get a set of those. They're the same front and rear too, which is good. They're not a weird front or weird rear. Whole car is like a mirror backwards and forwards, so you can play around with it as much as you like. We've gone through a fair few of these. We'd like to go through a lot more, but you know, everyone's got a choice on what they want to buy in uh, bits and pieces like that. And currently, this particular chassis is used by a gentleman by the name of um, uh, Tim from the Temple State Track here in Australia, and he runs in the GT class in Cirque, which is another track in Australia, and he's absolutely killing it. Um, literally, we call him, uh, what do we, we call him uh, the professor, GT professor. He's, he's to the point getting out of the box, very little change on the car apart from DC Joe's in the front, double card and joints, because uh, they come with single joints in the kit. He's basically just beaten <laughs> He's beaten everyone, even with guys with Osmatics and X4s. He just out, literally, he's driving with the car being as good as it is in his hands. He's outdriven everyone in GT, which is a controlled motor class, controlled tyre, controlled motor class, okay? And just a GT body, stand, <coughs> pardon me, standard body. <coughs> I came out of nowhere. <clears throat> So, to make it simple, if you buy one of these, and if you have one, <clears throat> there goes my voice, you can build it up as you like from the standard version, add bulkheads, leave the chassis, go to a carbon chassis later if you need to, if it's worn out, leave it as it is. It's got great grip because it's got a lot more flex being fiberglass than it does carbon. <clears throat> Change it as you go along, bulkheads will be your first bit, leave everything else, just go and run it. Don't do anything, just go and run it. And if you need to, just double card and joints in the front. Makes it better in tight corners if you tend to use a lot of steering. You don't get that chatter on the wheels when you go into corners and the wheels don't want to chatter. And later on, as you go along, you can actually buy the conversion and drop it onto your R3 chassis, okay? When you drop it onto the chassis, it changes the mount and it changes the top deck, which then gives you a car that has a single spine top deck and one piece motor mount which incorporates your servo. So your servo hangs off there, your spur gear here and your motor there. So it's all one piece. It's not three different pieces as you go along. It makes it easy to work on. The biggest advantage is it makes it so much easier to work on. Taking the motor out, putting the motor in, uh, spur taking in and out and all that type of stuff. Much more solid and a lot easier to work on. And there are options available if you wanted to go down that line on the top decks. Standard top deck size, one piece, you can get 1.6, 2 and 2.2. Splits, you can get 1.6, 2 and 2.2. Just play around with it as you wish. 
The splits though are a option that I'll put together from pit lane. A lot of guys know about this, I won't uh, prattle on about it. This is about the car. But literally, everything in the kits from G to T3M to the one with the conversion, there's a lot of stuff that crosses over. And there's a lot of stuff that'll actually interchange. I initially began with these cars on the T2 and basically went from that point onwards. But the T2 was different, completely different in the way it was made up. The series, the R series and the T3M series, brilliant. A lot of stuff crosses over. All your uh, pivot points from the plastic arms to the carbon arms cross over with just suspension arm holders bolted on. Great design, great design. Less, less fuss having to buy um, another new chassis and stuff like that. Because you can start with that and go to carbon arms later if you wanted to. No issues at all. You just buy the pivot, pill, uh, pillow balls, uh, the genuine ones, or the pit lane aftermarket ones. Up to you, up to you, whichever way you want to go. But that's the best, best option of a car that I have seen for a long time. And it's been around for a while. It's getting on to about two years old um, in conception, but very little graduated um, changes as it goes along. The conversion is the biggest. The conversion kit is your biggest uh, jump in the conversion of the kit. You don't need it. You do not need it. It is an option, and you just take it as it is. So play around with it. See what you reckon. Uh, get a car. Talk on the uh, forums. Give us a buzz. Talk us. Talk to us. There's my phone going. Uh, see what you want to do. And uh, good luck with your driving. Take care, guys.